everybody, I'm Clarissa. I'm a second year vet student here at Texas A&M. My hometown is in Denton, Texas, and I did my undergraduate work here at Texas A&M University in biology. All right, uh, my name is Nikki Lejeune. I'm a third year veterinary student. I'm from Houston, Texas. I did my undergraduate work at Stephen F. Austin State University up in Nacogdoches. Hi everyone, my name is Chanel and I am about to be a first year veterinary student so I recently just got accepted. I'm very, very excited. I'm from McAllen, Texas and I did my undergraduate here and my major was biomedical science. So we did have some questions submitted ahead of time and I wanted to answer those first. So the first question um, is, is it harder to get into vet school than medical school? Uh, is this true? If so, why? So technically speaking, it is a little bit more difficult to get into uh, veterinary school than medical school, and that's not based on curriculum. Pretty much all of the prerequisites are the same for medical school and veterinary school. The problem is just the lack of schools. There are a lot more medical schools than there are veterinary schools. In Texas, Texas A&M is our only veterinary school. Uh, there are, I think, eight medical schools in Texas. Mm -hmm. So the statistic I've heard is for every one spot in medical school, there's four students applying for that. But for vet school, for every one spot, there's eight students applying for that. So it is pretty competitive. Um, so that's why we wanted to do this. You guys can have the most competitive application you could possibly have. Um, our next question. Uh, does volunteer work at a vet clinic or hospital increase your chances of being accepted? And the answer to this is yes. So when you're working on your application now that you're in high school or even um, before if we have any younger folks joining us today, uh, you definitely want to be volunteering at a vet clinic or a shelter. When you do your application, you are asked for veterinary experience as well as animal experience. Um, Animal experience is any sort of work you do with animals. Veterinary experience has to be performed under a veterinarian. Um, so definitely shelter, uh, volunteering at shelters or shadowing veterinarians right now really, really helps. Um, so yeah, uh, there's a point system for the application process and you get more points awarded based on the number of hours you have. So I know I had 400 hours of veterinary experience. Do you guys know how many hours you had? I had close to 1,500 hours. So yeah, that I know that's a lot. I think the minimum for application is 100 hours of veterinary supervised experience. Yes, and Clarissa, how many did you have? I was similar to you, Nikki. I had about 400 hours when I applied. Um, yeah, I know that when you're getting the point system, it's pretty much, it's, it's you're playing a game. You're trying to see where you can get the most points. I knew I needed to get um, a higher GPA so that then maybe because I didn't have as much vet experience, my points would kind of balance out that way. So um, at the end of the program, we'll try, we'll try to give y'all a link to the veterinary website so you guys can see for yourself the point breakdown. Um, and we'll go a little bit more into that throughout the q and I'm sure. Um, and then the last question that we're going to talk about before we jump into y'all's questions. Um, what GPA test qualifications do you need to be accepted to vet school? So this is kind of a big question. We'll try to break it down. So as far as GPA goes, um, when I was going through the application process, I was told that a 3.6 <coughs> would be competitive. Um, when I started school, I started with a 4.0, and I gradually made my way down to a 3.6. Um, what did you ladies have? I had a 3.75. Okay. And I had above a 3.9, so that definitely helped strengthen Ooh, my application. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. Oh, uh, yeah, learning new things about each other. Um, yeah, so trying to keep that at a 3.6. The minimum, um, according to our website, is a 2.9. However, they do, they do make certain allowances. Um, there is a disclaimer that the selections committee can make their own decisions on what the minimum can be. It, they look at everything when they're looking at it. They don't just look at what school you went to. They don't just look at what GPA you have. So if you show them, also you have a personal essay where you can talk about this. If you worked full time all four years of veterinary school because, or I'm sorry, all four years of undergrad because you come from a single parent household and you had to work full time to help support your siblings and your parent, they will take that into consideration. So if you have the 2.9 but you started a vet clinic and ended world hunger, then that will look different than if you had a 4.0. Okay, so Caitlin, can you give us a question from some of our friends here? 
All right, so our first question is how much does vet school cost? What financial aid is available to help pay for the costs? And what are some of the classes like? Okay, so next week we're doing what is vet school really like? That's our Q&A. So we'll go ahead and answer that last one next week. But how much does vet school cost? So vet school is pretty expensive. Um, at a and M, I I think yearly tuition is about $22,000 mm -hmm. just for tuition. Um, I know when I was applying for financial aid, they go ahead and they say, it, including tuition and um, living expenses for your car, for your house, for your groceries, for textbooks, for everything, it's about $35,000 a year for in-state. Um, so it gets to be pretty expensive. I know, me personally, my parents are supporting me for everything that's not tuition. So they pay for my gas, they pay for my rent, they pay for my groceries. So I take out in student loans about twenty-two to $25,000 a year. Um, my first year I didn't get any scholarships, so I was taking out all of that in loan money. Um, the second year I got a couple of scholarships, so I was able to take a little bit less in loans. But I was also given an option. This might be a little bit intense for you high schoolers. I know um, many of you probably don't know a whole lot about finances. I'm still learning. Um, but some of my loan money has different interest rates. So when they saw my first year of performance, they allowed me to take out loans with a smaller interest rate. Um, and then they also gave me a couple of scholarships. So there's definitely um, ways to do it, but I would encourage you guys to apply for scholarships in undergrad. Um, definitely try to get everything covered in undergrad so you're starting fresh for veterinary school. I know it's really hard. Um, at Stephen F. Austin, a lot of students are on financial aid. Um, I was blessed I had enough scholarships and financial support from my parents that I was able to make it out without any debt, um, but I know a lot of students have debt going into veterinary school. So try to minimize that because veterinary school is four years, it's a long time, and that, that adds up, it's a lot of money. Do you guys have anything to add? I think that's about it. I haven't really started vet school yet, I'm about to start in fall, so I have yet to receive my financial aid packet, so everything she just talked about I haven't really experienced yet. Yeah, so I'm going to have to take out some loans soon, but it'll be okay, I'll pay it back eventually. Well, what, what scholarships are available and how do you go about getting them? So for undergrad, just in general, um, I know a lot of universities have one scholarship application you fill out for the whole university. So you give your information, you give what, what you want to do for the rest of your life, you answer all of the, the nitty gritty detail questions, um, and then you do a personal essay, which is just to say, you know, this is why I want to do this for the rest of my life. These are um, some ways that I encourage diversity. A lot of universities like diversity. And then they want to know about any hardships you have for um, financial base because they'll have merit-based scholarships based on how well you did in high school. They also have uh, the need-based, so for people who are um, financially in need of support for college. Um, and vet school has something very similar. We have a vet school application for scholarships. Um, and so you have to fill out your FAFSA, which is what you use to go through loan money. And then you also have the scholarship application, which does merit-based and academic-based, or I'm sorry, financial-based. Um, so I don't, I can't list you all of the scholarships. A lot of the vet school scholarships have been donated um, in honor of people or in memory of people or pets. A lot of people like to do that for their pets. Mm -hmm. um, so those scholarships are always changing. But that's and there are also outside scholarships, mm -hmm. both for veterinary school and uh, for your college education. And obviously I can't list all of those either, but I'll just let you know about one that I received as an undergraduate that it covered the whole cost of my college education, so I was able to go into vet school not having to have spent any money on my college education. And it's one that any of you who are are going to be juniors in the fall or younger are eligible for. When you take your PSAT, which is the test you usually take your junior year before your SAT, if you score well enough on it, then there are certain universities out there, and Texas A&M is one of them, that will give you a National Merit Scholarship, and that pays for your whole undergraduate education. Um, real quick, I did notice for, I think Fredericksburg had submitted these questions, I forgot to answer about tests and qualifications you need to get into vet school. So real quick, you were talking about the PSAT and stuff, that reminded me. So for vet school, you take the GRE, 
which is the same for most graduate schools. Unlike medical school with the MCAT, we don't have like a VCAT. So you just take the GRE, which is very much like the grown up SAT. It's math, verbal, and writing. Yes. Um, and you take that on a computer, they give you these giant headphones that are noise canceling, and you sit at a little computer and you do all of that. And you actually get your math and verbal scores immediately, um, and then your writing scores come later. Um, we do encourage you to leave enough time that you can take it twice before your application. That's what I did. Unfortunately, I made the exact same score twice. Um, and I cannot give you the um, breakdown of points for that because they recently changed the system over. And so um, I want to say any of your categories you want to shoot for like 150 points on the GRE. But again, if you go to our website, um, the vet school's website, they will have the actual points on there. Yeah, it's about an average of 155 for math and verbal. So they're kind of looking for a cumulative over 300. And then your verbal score at least, try and get at least a four to five on that. That's yeah, for you your writing. Yeah, I just yeah. checked it. I just went through the whole admissions process, all the interviews. So I pretty much have all the prereqs yeah. and all that stuff memorized. That's still. why she's here. <laughs> it's been a while for us. Okay, um, do we have another question? Yes, this question is from Smithville. How okay. difficult is it to find a job at a veterinarian's office? That is a good question. Um, so when I was in high school, I'm sorry that I'm answering all these questions. No, 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 no go ahead. Okay, so when I was in high school, my high school actually gave us job shadow days. So starting as a sophomore in high school, um, they told us, they kicked us out of school for a day and they told us we had to go spend eight to five or eight to three with someone in the profession that we wanted to go into. So um, I frantically called any veterinarians in the area I knew um, and actually the veterinarian that I took my own pets to let me come in and so I was there on a volunteer basis mm -hmm. so I encourage you if your school doesn't have something like that just ask your veterinarian if you can come and hang out for the day a lot of times in this profession we love people as much as we do animals and so a lot of the veterinarians that I've met love to teach people their craft their work they love to share the knowledge so um, if you say, hey, I, you know, I'm interested in doing this, I want to come and hang out with you, most of the time they're very excited to see you. That's getting your foot in the door. They don't necessarily want to hire someone they've never met before. Not to say you can't do that, but it's just easier if you come in and you shattered at 14, 15, 16 before you're able to get a job. So that way when you're looking for a job in high school or in undergrad, um, you're able to come back and say, hey, Dr. Smith, I really, really enjoyed shadowing with you. Is there any way I could come in and help out and work with you? Um, and a lot of times you'll start in the kennel. Um, that's, I think, that's where I started. Mm -hmm. Same. Is that where you started? Did uh, you not start in the kennel? Oh, no, I didn't work as a technician. Most of my work at the veterinary clinic was shadowing. Um, I was employed briefly helping out over the holidays, but I never worked for the vet clinic during the semester. I did work for a summer at the Houston Zoo, though. Oh, that's really cool. Um, so I know um, on your application when you're applying to vet school, which if you're in high school, it's a few years away, um, but some things to be thinking about now, they don't ask for experience, paid experience versus unpaid. It's simply animal experience and veterinary experience. Animal experience is anything from volunteering at a shelter, anything not with a veterinarian. Even owning a pet will count as hours. Um, so anything you've done. I even counted um, vacations that I went to um, a guest ranch and rode horses. The veterinarian I talked to said that counted. So any sort of animal experience counts. Your veterinary experience is that time where you're volunteering, you're shadowing, or you're working. You can get into vet school never having worked at a veterinary clinic a day in your life as long as you've been volunteering and shadowing there, as long as you've been with a veterinarian. Showing animals will count as animal experience, but it won't count as veterinary experience. So something that's important is that when you're filling out your application, they only ask for what, uh, what kind of experience you've had during college. So it's really great if you've gone to hang out with all these animals during high school but they really want everyone to be on the same level playing field, so only your college experience is what counts towards the application. So all the things you're doing right now in high school, it can help you for uh, connections later on when you go back home and you're looking for a place to work during the summer or during winter break. 
Yeah, but on your application, it allows you to log before college. So if you have those hours, you can still log them, but they really want to see that you've been doing it in college. All right, and our next question is from Allen High School, and they want to know, do you have to be in the top 10% to be accepted in Texas A&M? In undergrad or high school? Either one, the answer is no. No? Yeah. Um, were either of y'all in the top 10? I was in the top 8%. I think my senior class year, they changed it recently because I think we're getting close to capacity. Mm -hmm. So I know top 8%, they still have the automatic acceptance rule. I think they might be changing that soon. I know uh, UT recently changed that also. But you don't have to be in the top 10% as long as you have a really great application and uh, you're really driven. Yes, the top 8% or whatever they choose to change it to in the future, that's only for automatic acceptance. I know many people in undergraduate who are accepted not through the 10% rule, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Yeah, I went to a small private high school, so I graduated with 105 people. So our top 10% was literally our top 10 students. Um, and I know that I was in the top 15, uh, but I don't, I technically wasn't in the top 10%. And a and I will share a secret with you, I did not get into A&M for undergrad. Um, <gasps> gasps, oh my gosh. Um, I got into six other schools, but I did not get into a and um, So even if you don't get into a and for undergrad, it's not the end of the world. Um, they actually, when you're, they're looking at your application, you get points awarded based on what school you go to. So if you go to Rice, um, or any of you know Duke or uh, Vanderbilt, um, you're going to get a little more points than if you go to A and M or UT or SFA. And then if you decided to do most of your time at a community college um, locally, that gives you a little bit less points. So it's based on the tiers, based on academic rigor. So they want to see that you not only uh, are up to the challenge of hard classes, but that you can also take a really heavy course load. So when you decide what school you want to go to, try to take about 15 credit hours a semester um, just to show that you can, you can handle the academic rigor of college. And academic rigor, like Nikki said, does not just comprise where you attend undergraduate. It also comprises how many courses you take a semester, how many of those are science classes, and also whether you're involved in the honors program at your university. I was involved with the undergraduate honors program here at A&M. And I'd certainly encourage you to get involved in an honors program wherever you go to college because usually it involves smaller classes and a chance to really get to know your professors. I did honors classes in undergrad and I loved them. I had one professor, we had a class of 10 students, it was my sociology class, and our professor brought us chai tea every day to class. So we sat around drinking chai tea and talking about sociology. <laughs> um, and it was really fun. All of our tests were essay based though, so that was where we really got tested on our knowledge. Um, but it is really fun, you get to know your professors and I know I still have professors that even now in vet school I'll email and just let them know how I'm doing. So, definitely cool. Yeah, I actually didn't, I went, actually wasn't in any honors program, so it really probably would have helped my application if I was in one, but I wasn't, so uh, I got to take the larger classes, but it's still okay, I just had to try harder to make myself stand out. How about leadership ability and experience? Oh, they love leadership. Um, do you guys want to talk about what you did in undergrad? Okay, um, when I was an undergraduate, I was involved in Free Vet Society Aggie Orientation Leader Program, which if you guys come to A&M and you go through your new student conference, which is basically, basically orientation before your first week, I was the one that kind of ran that. Really awesome, I know. Um, but those were the main two programs that I kind of did throughout my entire uh, collegiate career, but I also held two different jobs. So some of the times I wouldn't have time just to do activities, but a part of the application is a leadership, like there's a specific tab asking about your leadership experience. Um, so if you can kind of get involved with something and stick with it throughout your entire college career, it shows that um, if you care about something, that you're gonna be passionate about it and you're gonna stick with it. Yeah, I know um, for me in undergrad, I, uh, we didn't have like a pre-vet society, so I joined um, our medical student association. Um, and so we had veterinary students, medical students, dental students, PT students, um, optometry students, any, any medical profession um, was welcome. 
And I did that. I was just a member of that, I think, all four years. And then um, I was also a member of our collegiate FFA. They sort of just needed me to help, so I did, um, and I had time. Because I didn't do FFA in high school, which I really wish I had, because I would have had a little more um, animal experience with livestock, which I really had none going into college. And then I joined an organization at SFA called the Traditions Council, which I'm sure is pretty similar to the one here at a and um, But we did a lot of things around the school all year, and I was a member for a year, and then I was their member relations officer, and then I was also the vice president. So those were sort of my leadership roles. I was also an ag ambassador. I was an animal science major at SFA, and so we had showcase Saturdays where prospective students would come to SFA and look, um, at all the different colleges and they would get to talk to students in those colleges and so I got to represent the College of Agriculture and I loved it. So, so Chanel and Nikki have both talked about leadership in organizations that had to do with veterinary medicine or agriculture. Unfortunately I wasn't involved in any sort of pre-vet society or FFA during undergrad but I did pursue my other interest. I play violin so I was president of the orchestra club for a couple years in undergrad and I also um, played with a couple other orchestras while I was here because music is something I still am very passionate about. Yeah, uh, real quick playing off of that, um, when I was going through the application process I was told by a friend of mine who had just graduated from vet school what are some really major points and she said try to keep a 3.6 GPA to be competitive she said try to stay in about two organizations, one that's veterinary related and one that's not veterinary related. That way they can see, not only are you committed to the veterinary profession, but you also have your own interests. So like Clarissa, who really loves music, um, that's why I joined the Traditions Council, because I'm, I'm very nostalgic. I love um, tradition, and so I did that. Um, and then just to keep shadowing. So even though I didn't have time to work for a veterinarian during the school year, I still shadowed someone. All right, so we have another question from Allen High School. Okay. Um, how can the CVA Level 1 certification help with acceptance into vet school? So I believe the CVA is the Certified Vet Assistant. Do you get Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, cool. Uh, so. uh, that scared me at first. <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> oh, I don't know what that means. Uh, yeah, so the Certified Vet Assistant, um, that will help in the sense that you will get some really good experience at a vet clinic. It will also help you probably get jobs at vet clinics. But there's not really a, a box on your application to check, like, oh, I'm, I'm a CVA certified student. Um, so it probably wouldn't hurt your application. Um, it'll also help in just life skills in general, just working at a vet clinic. Um, but there are no points awarded for the CVA or anything like that. Experience. Yeah, it will really help with your experience. It'll allow you to do some really cool things. Um, work with your veterinarian, um, so just that, it'll just help you log more vet hours, which you do get points for on your application. All right, and then our next question uh, is from Victoria. When you're going through the college application process, do they look at your grades all through high school or just your GPA? As far as your grades go, they do not look at your high school grades. Um, they ask what high school you went to. I think that's more just to see where you came from but it does not affect your application, only your college grades. I actually did better in college than I did in high school. I never made a 4.0 in high school, and I made a 4.0 two semesters in undergrad. Um, I did have to make some sacrifices for sure, it wasn't easy, um, but that's kind of what you learn when you're in college. You learn what's really important to you and what's not so important to you, um, and I knew that I wanted to do this. I knew I wanted to go to vet school, so I was willing to make the sacrifices. I loved football games. I tried to go to every football game I could go to, but I had to leave a couple early so I could go home and study. Um, but, so long story longer, um, the, your high school grades do not count towards your vet school application. They only look at your college grades. Caitlin, what's the question about um if they're considered for veterinary school or for college, undergraduate college? I believe it was for undergraduate college. Oh, then oh. that didn't answer your question at all. <laughs> then for undergraduate, yes, your high school grades matter. Mm -hmm. Is that, yeah, so um, they want to see that you did really well, um, but they don't just look at your high school grades, they also look at um, your SAT or ACT scores. So if your uh, grades aren't the most fabulous, but you do really well on your SAT or SAT, they definitely look at that and they'll take that into consideration. 
And just like everything else, they take your grades in context. So if you had extenuating circumstances, talk about that in your essays. They also take into account what classes you were taking. Were they AP classes? Were they IB classes? And they also take into account what high school you're attending. My high school wasn't very competitive. Um, but if you are at a really competitive high school where everyone is making really good grades and so maybe your class rank or your grades weren't as high as they might have been if you'd attended somewhere else, the colleges will look into that and they'll take that into consideration. Okay, so something about AP classes, I've had people ask me this before, if they get the credit for it in high school, should they still take it in college? Um, the thing is, some veterinary schools, they recommend that even if you have the AP credit for bio, that you still take it as an undergrad. That way they can see that you can perform at a collegiate level. But I don't think A&M has that stipulation. I know some of the other ones that I was looking into applying, um, they really, because I took AP bio in high school, and I turned in my transcript and got the credit for it and all that for undergrad, but I still took it uh, my freshman year because in high school I got a B for it as the credit. But um, here at a and I got A's in both classes. So it really did boost my GPA. And it was things that I already knew. And it kind of showed uh, the veterinary school that I can uh, succeed. And it's OK <laughs> to do that for some courses and not others. I got AP yeah. credit for both uh, introductory chemistry and introductory biology. But I felt much more confident in my biology skills. So I did not retake that course in college but I did retake chemistry so that I'd be better prepared for organic chemistry. Yeah, because a lot of the stuff builds on each other. So my biology class set the base for molecular and cell biology. Your chemistry classes set the base for OCHEM and biochem, which are all prereqs <laughs> that you need for vet school. So those might be nice to take again if during chem class you kind of uh, felt like you didn't learn as much. It would be really great if you did take them your freshman year of uh, college. Um, that way you can set the base for your future chemistries. Did you guys take any math classes? Uh, and uh, why, how is math used in veterinary medicine? Honestly, the most important math that you can learn how to do is to be able to do mental arithmetic easily and rapidly and accurately. Mm -hmm. And also to be able to do just basic algebra and dimensional analysis to figure yeah. out doses of medications. So you won't need calculus on a daily basis, but no. <laughs> it is very helpful to have solid math skills. Yeah, a lot of the math we use like for drug analysis mm -hmm. and stuff, we learn, you learn in your chemistry class. And so by the time you get uh, through your undergrad chem classes in your vet school physiology, um, it's pretty much the, the math that you learned in your college chemistry class. So if you like math, pursue it, go for it. Mm -hmm. um, it'll only make you better. <laughs> All right, so we have another question. Uh, was your original major biology or did y'all ever change majors? Okay, so my first <laughs> major as an undergrad was actually biology. Yay. And then, yeah, so it totally answered your question, except my sophomore year, I transferred into biomedical sciences. Um, I kind of started off with biology because I thought it had the classes that I want to take. And once I got to college, I realized that more of my interests were in the biomedical sciences field. I mean, obviously, I wanted to be a veterinarian, but I really liked the electives that biomedical science offered me. So I did transfer uh, to, to the different major. What's the difference in bio biomedical science and biology? So biology, I think more of the classes had to do with, um, I don't know, Clarissa, you were a yeah, biology I major. was a I biology major. major. <laughs> I started in biology and I did graduate with biology as well. And what I really liked about the biology program here was that a lot of the classes, they really always drew it back to what's happening at a cellular level and also what's happening evolutionarily. So I think a good class to contrast the difference between biomedical sciences and biology is microbiology, so the study of okay. bacteria. And so I feel like my undergraduate microbiology class focused more on how the bacteria live and survive. We learned about their different chemical cycles. We learned about how they evolved, whereas you can correct me on this, Chanel, I feel like there was more of an emphasis in biomedical science from what I've heard on what sort of diseases these bacteria cause yeah. and what mm -hmm. sort of clinical relevance they'd have. Mm -hmm. 
And I was an animal science major. Um, I chose that path uh, kind of like Chanel. I looked at the curriculum required and saw that in addition to the organic chemistry, biochemistry, genetics, all of the hard classes that vet school required, then all the rest of the classes I could go play with cows. Um, and so I, I really liked that idea. Um, I grew up in Houston, like in the greater city limits. And so I didn't have a whole lot of experience with livestock. Um, I had a lot of experience with dogs and cats and riding horses growing up, but um, not with farm animals and with livestock. So I thought, well, if I go into the ag field, um, I'll stick out like a sore thumb, but I will get some really good hands-on experience. So I will say my um, counterparts who did the BIMS major, the biomedical science major, they seem to be a little better prepared for uh, our first year of vet classes, which um, I was not. Um, so that was quite a transition for me. However, I felt more comfortable around the animals that we were working with um, in some of our other classes. So we'll probably talk a little bit more about that next week with the what is vet school really like portion of this Q&A. But um, I really, I felt for me and for my application process, agriculture, animal science, was best suited for me. So that's why I did that. And I did not change my major because I loved it. It was awesome. Yeah, and my reason for choosing uh, biomedical science was not only was it, uh, it did not only did it have the electives that I liked, but it was kind of like a catch-all major for all uh, people that wanted to be in health professions. So a lot of my classmates went to med school, some went to dental school, some went to PA school. Mm -hmm. But um, I really felt like it was going to prepare me for vet school because I did already take uh, micro, immunology, we got the option to take histology, um, I took anatomy and physiology and all those we'd be taking in vet school. So I kind of already have a baseline preparation for that. And just to round out this question, <laughs> for, for biology, the reason why I ended up sticking with that program was for a couple of reasons. One was I really loved the classes and the professors who taught them here at A&M. But also, and this is different at any college that you go to what the major consists of, but at A&M Biology was a very flexible major. They gave us a lot of freedom in our electives. And so because of that, I was able to spend the fall of my senior year studying abroad in Mexico. So that's something I feel like I wouldn't have been able to do if I'd chosen a major with a little um, more strict electives. Did you study abroad during the summer? What? Yeah, I got to study abroad actually during the summer with our BIMS program. We're in Germany, and so oh, we traveled. Right. Yeah, we traveled oh, through most yeah. of Europe, and it was pretty great. Um, it was history of human and veterinary medicine all throughout Europe. So we got to do a lot of different tours. We went behind the scenes at the zoo. We went to a lot of different like old hospitals and saw how. Um, the first anesthesia and all that took place it was really cool. So honestly, you guys should definitely try and study abroad. Yes. It makes you stand no, out. Definitely. There's like a section on your application that asks about unique experiences, and that's where I wrote all about my study abroad. Yeah. And there's a lot of different options for study abroad, too, because mine was a little different because I went in the fall and I was an ex essentially an exchange student. So I wasn't with a bunch of other people from a and I was just a regular student at a Mexican university for four months. So that was also a really great experience. And she's fluent in Spanish. Yay! Yay. <laughs> How many times did you have to apply to the a and vet school to be accepted to the program? Okay, on the count of three. What's one, the average? Two, three. One. Once. <laughs> okay, so we were all, um, we got in on our first round, which is kind of unusual. Yeah. A lot of times, because when you're applying, and you don't get in and you reapply, um, then the first time applicants are competing against you. And if you've already applied, you already understand the process, you had time to go and make adjustments to your application. So the second time applicants normally have a more competitive application than the first time applicants, just because you've already been through um, the, the game once before. Um, so I guess that there are people who have applied multiple yeah. times. I shadowed a vet who applied five times. Um, I don't know of anybody in my class that applied more than twice. I don't think y'all have any. Um, we have one girl that I know that three. got in on her third try. Okay, yeah, and then um, Caitlin was saying there was someone who she's on her third try. Um, we also have a student in my class who actually failed out his first year and is now back. So um, there are many paths to vet school. These are just some of them. How many years of undergrad do you need? Ooh. Well, you know, that's, 
that's a great really. question. Uh, honestly, you're allowed to apply whenever you've finished all of the prerequisites, which are listed on our website. And so for most people, that's three or four years of undergraduate. Um, but there are also other people who maybe did other careers first or got a degree and went into a different field, and they might not go back to school and complete another bachelor's. They might just go back for the prerequisites. So honestly, the answer is just whatever makes you a solid competitive applicant and allows you to finish all of the prerequisites. Does the veterinary schools accept males too? <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, there are boys in vet school. So I know um, about 10 years ago, this field was heavily dominated by men. Um, and so there was actually a woman's auxiliary committee formed to increase female um, uh, admittance into vet school. And they worked really, really well. So vet school's about, I think, 85% male. Um, I, it's 80% female. Oh, I'm so yeah, sorry. Oh, yes. <laughs> no, we wish it was 85% male. Um, there's, <laughs> in my class, there's 100 females and 30 guys. So it's, uh, it's a really great place for you young gentlemen. So that's all we have for the question portion, um, but we're going to go ahead and direct you to our website. So our goal, um, besides helping future generations become veterinarians, we're actually an organization that create science curriculum for teachers. So the three of us, when we're not speaking with students like you guys or um, even middle school and elementary students, uh, we are helping develop some science curriculum and getting people excited about science and technology, engineering, math, any of the STEM fields uh, using veterinary medicine and our knowledge and our experiences. So this is our website. It's peer.tamu.edu. Um, and if you look, most of it's going to be for teacher resources. For those of you ag students, we actually have some really cool ag resources over there towards your right, the ag science lesson. Um, right now we have the videos uh, tab pulled down. And if you look uh, third from the bottom, it says interviews. So at those interviews, when you highlight that with your mouse, it's going to pull out another drop down menu. And you'll see there's a section that says vet students. All of those vet student interviews talk a little bit about um, more individuals paths to vet school. So if you're thinking, man, these three girls sound like they didn't really have a crazy roundabout way of getting into vet school. We do have some students that have some very interesting ways that they got into vet school. So if you want to look at some more um, students, and it also mentions what they're interested in because there are a lot of different fields of veterinary medicine. Um, we actually do have a tour of the vet school. So it's a little um, virtual tour. Um, if you are super interested and you have a bunch of friends at your school that are interested in vet school, we do have group tours. Clarissa actually helps with that. And so you go to the Texas A&M website and you can actually schedule a tour. Um, and it's really awesome. We have a few more minutes, so we just kind of wanted to end with um, what other careers exist in veterinary medicine besides operating a vet clinic. So we actually have a presentation that we present at schools that is called Careers in Veterinary Medicine. So um, Clarissa, do you kind of want to kick us off with that? Sure. So um, even as a veterinarian, there's lots of options beyond just working in a veterinary clinic. That are ve There are veterinarians involved in designing research projects to help with animal health or human health. There are veterinarians at zoos. There are veterinarians who teach because we have to have veterinarians to teach us how to be good veterinarians. <laughs> and there's also veterinarians working in government as well to make sure that there's legislation passed that promotes veterinary medicine and also to do disease surveillance as well. Yeah, so uh, USDA um, and the FDA hire veterinarians um, and those help with food safety. So anytime um, you eat any sort of animal product, a veterinarian has looked at that animal and has looked at that product to make sure that it's safe for consumption. Um, also for uh, if we are importing or exporting animals, veterinarians have to be there for that too. We have army veterinarians. Um, the army has a pretty cool website with that. It has pictures of sea lions that they've trained to disarm uh, underwater mines. So there are just a lot of different facets of veterinary medicine. Um, different animal companies, Hills, Purina, um, the food companies, the drug companies, they all hire veterinarians um, because they need animals to test on um, and they need animals to um, see how well their product works. So they have veterinarians there to help with that to make sure the animals are being treated well. 
um, and that their products are actually working well. Um, so if you guys uh, ever want us to come to your school, please check out our website, um, contact us. We'd love to come and see you in person. Um, otherwise, I think that's it. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. We really appreciate you logging in. Um, and tune in next week for our What is Vet School Really Like Q&A.